You automated your email responses, set up those fancy workflows everyone raves about, and started using AI tools that promise to give you your life back. Somehow, you're busier than you've ever been in your entire life. Why does the thing that's supposed to save you time keep creating more work instead? Today, I'll explain why automation never actually saves you time like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand whether you're using automation wrong or if the whole promise was broken from the start. Here's what nobody tells you when they're selling you that shiny new automation tool. Automation doesn't eliminate work. It just moves it somewhere else, like shoving junk from your living room into the closet. You automate one task and suddenly you've got capacity to notice 10 other tasks you were ignoring before. It's like finally cleaning out your email inbox and discovering your entire filing system is a dumpster fire. Your brain didn't get less busy. It just found new problems to stress about. Think of it like this. You're working at a coffee shop, making lattes by hand, one at a time. It takes five minutes per drink, so you can handle 12 customers an hour if you're hustling. Then you get an espresso machine that does it in 30 seconds. Game changer, right? Except, here's what actually happens. Word gets out that your lattes are fast now, so more customers show up. Your boss sees the machine can handle more volume, so they schedule fewer baristas per shift. Customers start ordering two or three drinks at once instead of just one. You went from making 12 lattes an hour to making 60, and somehow you're more exhausted than before. The machine made you efficient, but efficiency just gave everyone permission to demand more from you. This has a name. It's called Jevons Paradox, and it's been screwing people over since the 1800s. When coal-powered steam engines got more efficient, people didn't use less coal. They used way more of it. The efficiency made coal cheaper and more practical, so everyone wanted to build factories and run them constantly. It's the same reason faster internet didn't reduce your screen time. It just made you stream Netflix while scrolling Instagram. When something gets easier, we don't do less of it. We crank the volume up and pretend we're winning. And here's where it gets brutal with modern automation. A process that used to happen once a week can now happen every hour, so it does and nobody asked if it should. You set up an automated report that pulls sales data instantly instead of waiting for Sharon from accounting. Great, right? Except now your boss expects updated numbers every morning. When something looks weird, they slack you at 7 a.m. asking for an explanation before you've poured coffee. You didn't save time. You just raised everyone's expectations about how fast you should move. It's like getting a faster car and realizing your commute didn't get shorter because now you're expected to live farther away. Your standards go up too. And that's the sneaky part. Before automation, you'd send one email campaign per month because doing it manually took forever. Now you've got tools that can blast out campaigns daily, segment audiences, and track open rates in real time. So you do all of that because if the tool can do it, why wouldn't you? Except now you're spending three hours a day managing campaigns instead of three hours a month. You automated the sending, but you added strategy, optimization, testing, and late night panic when click-through rates drop. The robot took the simple part. You kept all the hard parts and added five new ones on top. Now check this out. You're not just doing more work. You're also doing a completely different kind of work that nobody warned you about. You're managing the automation itself, which is its own job disguised as a time saver. The workflow breaks at midnight and suddenly you're troubleshooting API connections instead of sleeping. Someone on your team doesn't understand how the system works, so you're answering questions about the tool you built to save everyone time. It's like buying a robot vacuum, then spending two hours a week unsticking it from under the couch. You didn't eliminate the work, you just outsourced it to a thing that needs constant babysitting. This creates another problem most people miss completely. Every automation tool you add creates integration headaches with the other tools you're already using. You've got your email platform talking to your CRM, which feeds into your analytics dashboard, which triggers your Slack notifications. When one link in that chain breaks, the whole thing falls apart. You spend half your day playing detective, trying to figure out which connection failed and why. The tools were supposed to work together seamlessly, but instead you're maintaining a fragile ecosystem of dependencies. One software update can bring down your entire workflow like a house of cards. There's a psychological trap here too that makes everything worse. When you automate something, it feels like progress, like you're finally getting your act together. That feeling is addictive, so you automate more things, chasing that same high of optimization. 
Before long, you've automated so many processes that you can't remember how anything actually works anymore. You're completely dependent on systems you barely understand, and when they fail, you're helpless. It's the illusion of control. You think you're the master, but really you've become the servant to machines that run your life. This matters to you because we've been sold a lie about productivity. The gurus and software companies and LinkedIn hustle bros all promise the same thing. Automate everything. Scale infinitely. Optimize your life. But nobody mentioned that more output just means more to manage, more to fix, and more to explain. You're not relaxing on a beach while your automated empire runs itself. You're drowning in Slack notifications about the thing that's supposed to be running itself. Here's what actually works, and it's the opposite of what they tell you. The real trick isn't automating everything. It's choosing very carefully what not to scale. Automate the repetitive, low-stake stuff that doesn't need your judgment or creativity. Email responses to common questions? Sure, automate that. Scheduling social media posts? Go for it. But the work that actually moves the needle, the strategy, the relationships, the decisions that require your brain, protect that. Keep it slow, manual, and rare. Use automation for boring weeknight dinners so you can save energy for cooking something you'll actually remember. Some people are figuring this out and opting out of the optimization trap entirely. They're intentionally limiting how much they scale, even when they could do more. They're saying no to tools that add complexity for marginal gains. They're batching work into focused blocks instead of sprinkling it across every waking hour. They're treating their calendar like a bouncer at an exclusive club. Just because something can get in doesn't mean it should. The goal isn't maximum productivity. It's maximum clarity about what actually deserves your limited time and energy. The system isn't broken. It's working exactly as designed, just not for you. Software companies make billions selling tools that promise freedom, but create dependency instead. Your company loves automation because it means they can squeeze more output from fewer people and call it innovation. Everybody wins except the person stuck in the middle, maintaining the machines and explaining the dashboards. You're not using automation wrong. You're just caught in a trap where efficiency becomes its own treadmill. So here's where we land. Automation shifts work. It doesn't erase it. When you make something efficient, you use more of it, not less. That's what happens every time. Higher efficiency raises everyone's expectations, including your own, so the bar keeps climbing. You end up managing the automation itself, which is a job nobody mentioned in the sales pitch. You also maintain a complex web of integrations that break constantly and keep you up at night. The real move is automating selectively to create space, then fiercely guarding that space from filling back up. Maximum productivity is a trap. What you actually want is maximum clarity about what matters and the courage to keep everything else small. So here's the real question. If you could only automate three things in your entire workflow and had to do everything else manually, what would you choose? And what would you finally admit you've been wasting your time on?